Hello and welcome to my Friday tasting. For those of you who normally join me this time every Friday, I am not doing a live tasting because I am traveling. If you want to make sure that you catch all my tastings, especially the live ones, make sure you hit that subscribe button there on the YouTube and, um, and you won't miss it. You know, we have a lot of fun live tastings where I've tasted things like Pappy versus The Field. Uh, I've tasted uh, Henry McKenna against other Heaven Hill products. And I've got more lined up down the road. But I'm traveling right now, so you get this one recorded. And I have a fun flight here. I've got a little bit of rum, a privateer rum. Uh, I actually have a celebrity whiskey here, Pat Benatard's husband, uh, who's a famous uh, singer, songwriter and guitarist right here with the three chord really kind of like the story behind that three chord whiskey and then a barrel pick from uh, wilderness trail my buddies uh i from uh, bourbon pursuit breaking bourbon and bourboner did a community round table barrel pick and i wasn't a part of that unfortunately but i will taste it and give you my thoughts and of course the new uh westland peat week if you're not familiar with westland they're in Wash Seattle, Washington. They're a leading American single malt distiller, doing great things out there. They actually have their own peat bog, so fun, fun story about those guys. They're doing good things. So I'm going to go ahead and get right to it. If you don't know, I wrote a book called Rum Curious. I tell people all the time that I am a big rum nerd. In fact, um, I would say if, uh, if you had to, to make me choose of like what rum – would I take with me on a deserted island? I think it would probably be pretty easy. It'd probably be Foursquare. Foursquare rum is just something that's so amazing. It's delicate. It's complex. Uh, there's nothing like it in the in the world. But there are other rums in this world, and Privateer, I believe, is probably the best American rum. They do uh, a, a lot, consistently. They do a lot of great things. Now, Richland rum in Georgia was actually my pick for best American rum a few years ago, or last year, not a few years ago. Or was it two years ago? My God, it's 2020. How time flies. But uh, Privateer, Richland, um, and a few others are always kind of neck and neck for me. But uh, American rum is, is kind of making a little bit of a comeback. And Privateer is right there at the head of that curve. So you can buy this at uh, Sealbox. Uh, speaking of bourbon, that is owned by my friend Blake uh, Riber. Uh, it's called go to sealbox.com. I'll try to provide a link here so you can buy it. Uh, you can buy it and he'll ship it to you to your house. <coughs> My goodness, excuse me. And so um, let's give this a taste. This is a, a cash drink, uh, single barrel, 108.8 proof. It is, don't see any age on here. Don't see much information on here, but typically um, the stuff is really good. Hear that? Put the cork back in. Now it's in. A, you might be wondering why am I starting my my tasting uh, with rum? Well, I'm going to end it with peak and peat, and I'm san sandwiching uh, the two like typical American whiskeys in the middle. And the reasoning for that is because I'm putting the two extremes on the outside and the normals on the inside. Kind of a, a palate sandwich. So off the nose, I, I get some, um, some really nice uh, molasses, uh, some like uh, cherry, some cherry syrup. Uh, not like cough syrup, but like, um, like you're, you're at the end of the maraschino cherry jar, and it's got like that syrupy smell. You kind of know that smell. You, you're about to throw it away, and your hands get all sticky when you like throw it away. And honestly, this is gonna sound strange because it's a rum, but I get rye bread in this. Like I get a big old whiff of rye bread. So, yeah. Oh boy, on that palate, it's just so good. It's uh, layering it with maple syrup. Uh, coffee, toffee, uh, vanilla. Um, my goodness, there's a lot of spice there. Kind of a cardamom. Oh man, this is just gorgeous. This is just gorgeous. 
And I got to tell you something, too. This is this is the future of American rum. And this is incredibly exciting. You know, American rum used to be a great category. And then it turned to shit. Wow. This is fantastic. If this is what all rum tasted like, rum would own the category. It would, it would, it would own spirits drinkers. The, the people who like to sip the, the spirit versus have a cocktail. But unfortunately, this is not what all rum tastes like. People want to water it down. They want to add sugar, all kinds of stuff. Mm. Highly, highly recommend this. My God, that's good. Kudos to uh, Privateer for putting out such a beautiful, beautiful rum. And kudos to my buddy Blake at Sealbach for finding this and sending it to me. That is, that's, uh, that was a fun thing to open there. Okay, so now about this bottle. This is a, this is a 12-year-old um, blended bourbon. So it's a blend of straight bourbons. It's a blend from uh, India, uh, Tennessee and Indiana. I'm sorry, Kentucky and Tennessee. And it is bottled in Michigan. Now, Neil Giraldo is married to Pat Benatar and is, uh, in his own right, a famous musician who has written tons of Grammy-winning songs. Incredible talent. And as you know, if you've been following my new podcast, The Fred Minnick Show, which was basically named that because for lack of better uh, naming, um, you know I'm trying to do things where I put whiskey and music together and so i on that podcast i interview musicians and i uh, might have to see if i can get neil and uh pat on the show that might be a good interview and we sip their whiskey but they sent me this bottle we're gonna find out what they're all about i will say that uh, you know the when when these celebrity oriented brands come out you know there there is a in the bourbon community, there's a, there's a tendency to want to kind of like shun them and like push them out and say, oh, great, another another celebrity brand. That's one that jumped the shark. I think it's very important that we don't do that uh, because celebrities getting into the game is actually a sign of the overall success for the industry. Uh, and so my thought is let's not judge them based on who they are as individuals. Let's judge them based on the whiskey. So if Kim Kardashian and uh, Kanye want to come out with a, with a whiskey, you know, I'm not going to judge them for who they are. I'm going to judge them for the whiskey. And I think, too, any distiller, you're out there promoting you're the first this, you're the first that. At the end of the day, nobody cares. So let's give this a shot. Let's do. I'm going to taste it based on the, you know, on the whiskey, and give my analysis based on the whiskey, not who owns it. Who is an amazing musician, and seriously, Neil Giraldo is like awesome. So if you uh, don't know who that is, I'll I'll add some um, I'll add some links in the bot in the comment section. But he is an amazing musician. Okay, so here we go. Tasting, gonna taste the three chord, twelve year old, uh, straight bourbon whiskey. Now this is a blend, so it's a blend of straights. It comes in a barrel label on the label. It says barrel proof at 107. Now uh, the term barrel proof is really kind of, you know, 107. Eh. I doubt that this is like straight from the barrel from the tube because I know the distilleries that they're probably acquiring from and they most likely added a good chunk of water to get it down to 107 proof. But hey, um, you know, worse things have happened on a label. At least they tell you, I mean, seriously, anymore, I'm just happy if they tell you the state of distillation. I've, uh, I've grown numb to whiskey labels. Okay, so it you know it's got a patented um, you know Tennessee distillery smell and in uh, this kind of like Flintstone vitamin, very mineral like, that um, tells me at least one of the sources of the whiskey. Now that's not good or bad. Sometimes these are great, sometimes not so much. But let's find out. And then there's like a cotton candy coming in underneath. Now, 
But you know what? On the palate, it's quite good. Uh, you get like kind of like a fried pie crust, um, like a caramel chew, like a, a little bit of salt. There's like there's like a brininess to this, and then a kind of on the back end, there's like a, a bitterness, like a pecan shell, like you just ate a pecan, and you you know that that shell note is right there. Um, yeah, this is good. I recommend it. I actually, unfortunately, don't have much information on this. I don't know the price point, but I'll put that in there later. But this is, this is quite tasty. Um, if it's if it's like in that, you know, sixty to hundred dollar range, I would add it to the collection. I don't, but again, I don't know the price point on it at the moment. I will put it in the comment section. Um, actually, what I could do here, I could just do a Google. Yeah, that happens sometimes. You get uh, you get hard charging. And you don't even think uh, of something as simple as uh, as getting the price. Okay, so it's looking like bourbon liquor store and whiskey liquor store. They're selling it for about a hundred bucks. Um, there's another site that's selling it for forty. So there's some variations here on uh, on the price, but that's pretty typical in today's market. People get um, get a new bottle, and they will mark it up and sell it. I, if you ask me, you know, retailers got to really watch themselves with the with the price gouging, because consumers are watching and they all have phones and they're outing you every single day. So if you get a bottle of uh, forty five dollar whiskey and you mark it up to be, you know, two hundred bucks, you know, like a Weller antique. Um, people are going to call you out. So now let's get to the Wilderness Trail pick uh, from my good friends uh, on the Community Roundtable. Now, if you're not subscribing to the podcast, Bourbon Pursuit, make sure you are. That's uh, I'm a part of that. I got a series in that in every episode called Above the Char. And I also will uh, join in for interviews. So it's a, it's a good time. So you'll learn. You, it's for the bourbon geeks. So if you want to learn more about bourbon, Jump on Bourbon Pursuit. Okay, so this is uh, four years old and four months. And it is the, um, it's a single barrel. This is their, they, what I, what I love about uh, Wilderness Trails, they do a sweet mash technique. And this is the one that has rye in it. So this is their, one of their rye recipes. And, you know, they have this synthetic. I don't know what it is. I don't like synthetic corks. And it kind of, every time I pull one, they're, like, harder to put back in. Uh, I like a good old-fashioned natural cork or a, or a screw top. Woo-wee. That is a good nose right there. <clears throat> Definitely has a lot of breads like i'm thinking like um a bakery it smells like a bakery in here like with the bread like more of the savory type oh wow wow cinnamon 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 son of a bitch that's a lot of cinnamon this is like grabbing a a, a can of cinnamon and just pumping it down in your tongue oh I don't think I've tasted a such a strong cinnamon forward bourbon and since a Four Roses barrel pick in 2010. Dear God, if you love cinnamon, you need to get on sealbox sealbox.com right now and buy this. Where you, I think it, I think there's you can buy this right now. Um, this exact barrel, but this is a cinnamon flavor highway that just won't quit. Wow. Gorgeous. Cinnamon, 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 cinnamon. Okay, so now we're going to go from cinnamon to peat. Now, what peat is, this is a peated whiskey. Um, you can see they do they go all out with their, with their art. Um, it's a fun, fun uh, way that they, they, they do things. They do these promotions, call it peat week, and they have these fun designs that kind of like remind me a lot of the craft beer movement. So Westlands is edgy, you know, craft distiller that actually sells to a larger company uh, after their founding, you know, a few years later. 
but that's not here or there. They make really good American single malts, and I believe they are one of the category leaders. They do great work, and their art design is off the charts with this stuff. They're very creative. So this is going into a new French oak barrel. This is cask number 3369. I feel like there's a story behind that number. Uh, there are only going to be 590 bottles. This is 50 months old, so that puts it a little over four years old. And, yeah, so let's get to it. Now, this is, they, they do have their own peat bogs there. So... Westland is kind of this, um, and they're also, they're, Westland is also doing a lot of studies into like new strains of new types of barley with Washington State University. So they're a very advanced, pushing the envelope kind of distiller. And I just, I love what they do. I love what they bring to whiskey. And I love the fact they're like, no, we're not going to do bourbon. We know it's hot, but we are American single malt. So they're helping putting on the map. And, and I got to tell you, this is a peat bomb. So peat is smoky and so this is kind of uh this is like uh coals like cindering and you can smell the the smoke coming off the coals the danger with having um something that's peat is that sometimes the peat just gets overrides everything and you can't taste anything else but the peat some people like that some people taste band-aids when they taste peat not me i actually like peat but i don't want peat to be the overriding note i want to see something else when i'm tasting it unfortunately on the nose uh i'm getting peat and just a little bit of like apple like kind of like an apple pie mm. on the palate that smoke is definitely there um it's kind of like overriding a little bit, but underneath that first wave, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There's this fun rice pudding. Rice pudding is not something I would expect out of a, of a out of a Westland product, but I'm getting this crazy rice rice pudding. And, you know, you, you get those rice puddings and sometimes there's a little kind of like burnt uh, sugar over top. That's what it's like. It's not quite a creme brulee note, but it's very similar. And I like that. I like that quite a bit. So this round of um, this round of tasting really turned out to be a fun one. I, I enjoyed this rather a lot, um, starting with, uh, but if I'm going to pick my favorite out of this whole flight, it's without a doubt going to be this rum. Now, I am a rum-loving nerd. And this bottle of Privateer, thank you, Blake, is absolutely gorgeous. From there, I'm I'm going to go with the um, I'm going to go with the Wilderness Trail Barrel Pick for my boys at the Community Roundtable, guys. This is a cinnamon flavor highway, if there ever was one, and you got to sign up and get on that highway if you like cinnamon. It is really, really, really tasty. And I'll tell you what, coming in at really a close third is this three chord uh 12 year old the blend of uh, kentucky and tennessee bourbons really enjoyed this had some layers to it that uh, i wasn't quite expecting so whoever's i'll be curious to know if neil the musician is actually behind the blending if so that would be really cool because you don't get many of the musicians uh, uh, that come out with whiskeys will get their hands dirty and into the actual product. Like Bob Dylan doesn't really have anything to do with the whiskey. He's basically created the bottle design. Now, Clown from Slipknot, he did the blending for that, uh, that Iowa whiskey from Cedar Ridge called Number 9. Now, as you know, the Number 9 Reserve won my Celebrity Whiskey of the Year. So... Good job from uh, good job clown on that one. So, but this one, this one would be a contender. I think this would be a contender for that category. And uh, the Pete Week always impresses. What a this was a this was a very flavorful uh, whiskey, and I rather enjoyed the uh, rice pudding note I got. So, if you're into rice pudding, if you're into uh, smoke. 
Go find one of these bottles of uh, peat wheat from Westland. So that'll do it for this Friday tasting. Make sure you're clicking subscribe so you don't miss any tastings coming up. And hey, why not give me a follow on the social medias and check out my new podcast where I interview musicians. And don't forget my baby, Bourbon Plus. I will talk with you next week. Until then, see you later.